Hi, how are you? Good morning. Welcome, welcome. We're going to uh, cracking, cracking in the modern age. Why? Because cracking has changed. Password cracking has changed. We have very powerful devices. Techniques have changing and uh, are changing. And this is just an introduction. My goal is to make you be able to break security you will have the possibility of have the password cracking when you have time, free or at work. My name is Pablo Caro. I'm an engineer. I studied in Granada. I'm from the southern part of Spain, Granada, and I work for Telefonica Spain internally as well as working for clients. In many times we apply the password cracking techniques. What we're going to see is and I'm going to be very practical here. You're going to see me as a hacker working here with a keyboard. It's what I do in my daily practice, what we do. We're going to uh, start working here. We have only 50 minutes. Techniques are the same. They go uh, always uh, in the same mode. When I find the time, I do things like this. First of all, Short introduction to password cracking. Why is it so? Why about password cracking? And what can we crack? Yes, we know what password cracking is, but what are we going to breach? What are we going to crack? We're going to crack everything. We're going to look at me and it's a mirror image. And you're going to see what I'm going to use and what I'm going to uh, write on my keyboard. And we're going to become better and better. Items two and three are practical things no slides it's essentially i'm going to be in practical mode what i would do if i were in real time auditing something how about password cracking what does it mean password cracking is just trying to look for passwords and breaching security it's a generic thing to give you a similar thing auditing in whatever red team um, situation where he is a hacker. We are covering our face and we want to know about user accounts, get some data to steal information and this is protected. There is a lock and the lock has a key and the key is our password. The password that, or from the person who's protecting whatsoever. The treasure. And when we have password cracking our attempt is to create a similar key to break in we're going to use keys. We're going to use many keys, many keys, many keys. And as it's not possible, we're going to keep on trying and trying. And after an endless process, there will be a moment when we'll find a key that fits in. It's like the original key. We will open the lock and we will get the treasure. In general, we have different types of password and password cracking processes. We have the online and the offline. It depends on where the treasure is. If the treasure is somewhere else, remotely, this is the online password cracking. It's in another system, some other person's system. It is trying many keys, but against somebody else's system. That means that we have to follow his rules, his limitation, bandwidth, processing capacity, configurations, security characteristics in order to have a brute force uh, attack. And we're going to be slower. Password cracking online, whatever service. HTTP, HTTPS, basic, uh, the person who wants the user and the password or a formula uh, for logging, that's online. Online because we're interacting with this form the SSH, SMB we use frequently in internal auditing. On the other hand, we will have the password cracking, offline password cracking. Offline password cracking is when this treasure is not at somewhere else's location. It is in my system. So we can be as fast as possible. There are no limitations. Sky is the limit. So I can I know my system. If I have a slow device, I can do it slowly. But if I have a very fast device, I can do it very fast. And not only this, but also 
if creating a fast or slow process, I can have 10 manufacturers manufacturing keys. If it is offline, I can be as fast as I want. Examples, password, uh, office documents. If I want to have password cracking, I do it. And I have different uh, files, volumes, ciphered volumes, hashes, hashes, operation systems, Unix systems, whatever system. NTLM, if you have a secure injection, we can get the password or the hash of the password of the user of this database base, and we can go against it. And we have Wi-Fi in both cases. Wi-Fi is offline on, or online. Raise your hands. Who would say Wi-Fi is online? Online. Who would say it's online? Offline now? Both are right, because in the end, Wi-Fi, it's an external service. I have a router, and I can connect many times. If I am at a coffee place, and I know that the password was something like the name and one somewhere, I can try 20 times, and then I will get the right answer, or I can do it offline. I will see it afterwards at the first lab, lab or experiment, experience. Another practical thing. And we have to learn from this that all password cracking attacks use a dictionary. Always, always a dictionary. The dictionary will be our key collection. And we will have that not always explicitly. We can have a file with words. No, no, no. We can generate this dynamically. Another parenthesis is not a dictionary, only a single one. You can combine several dictionaries. You can have a word dictionary and one with numbers. Uh, numbers, characters are letters and numbers. And in the end, it is like a dictionary combining several dictionaries, combining two dictionaries or several dictionaries. And we focus on online attacks. Then the password cracking online is trying to control a service that's not under our control, belongs to someone else. So we're going to take it easy, we're going to do it slowly. Uh, they will make us do it slowly. If we want to have a login, and if it takes five seconds to know if we have a password or not, it's one try every five seconds. In general, online attacks are very slow, and we have to have very small dictionaries. In general, short dictionaries, we have to target and we have to use uh, uh, fit to measure, made to measure dictionaries. It depends on the username. Pablo is the name, one, two, three, uh, Pablo, whatever, or we could use it is a C E W L call, and we can get the uh, website, we get the significant words, and we get a dictionary for the company, what's important. We have a company culture, company image, and we have the words. They are important for the company. So it's a relatively small dictionary, short dictionary. Those are not interesting attacks, because you have to wait and see. You create a small dictionary, you wait, you attack, and we wait. We wait till it's uh, already finished. There are things trying to stop us, and security devices will stop us after three attempts we will be kicked off or the user could be blocked and that's it and then we uh, would uh, say we hope we won't be we won't be then discovered because uh, anyone could see us they are noisy they are obvious attacks so that's the end of what I'm going to say about online. They are easy. They have Hydra, Medusa, Burp, and Map. Burp for the web attacks. Burp, Burp, the intruder module, changing the user, changing the password to iterate using a list or a dictionary. And Map with NSE scripts allowing us to have a brute force or even Metasploit. Metasploit is a collection of tools, and it's a brute force attack, 
some of them, of line attacks, little changes, because those are my rules. I'm going to play my way. So it's my speed. I'm going to be as fast as possible. Then I'm going to use big dictionaries, very big dictionaries, huge dictionaries, colossal dictionaries. It depends on what I'm going to attack. But in general, I have a big margin. And then I can open here. I have to open my mindset. Here it's not only one dictionary or texts and words. I can have a mask. Mask it's a way of creating online, uh, creating offline dynamic dictionaries. I can have hybrid attacks, files with masks combined together. And we are combining and we're generating numbers in a dynamic mode. Then, as a matter of fact, even though we need to work very fast because our team gets bored and they invent other things to try to crack more things, many more things. And in general, if we have lots of passwords, 20% will be quite, uh, well, easy. Simple ones, 60% will be mid-rank mid difficulties. And then 20% will be difficult to break, difficult to break the password, the secrecy. So those are randomized passwords, and they become more difficult. Those passwords, from people having given this a thought, you have a special combination like attacks, of, like neuronal networks and so on, you could do more. We have here programs used for this. It depends on the case, but Hashcat. Hashcat is what we're going to prove today. But we have John, who was one of the pioneers, and it's been developed as uh, the technology has progressed. John has progressed. We have F crack zip, or through crack, true crack, true crack. And the uh, first one is cracking. Uh, zips with a password, and the other one is cracking true scripts. And we know that we have to break security, but what am I going to break? What am I going to breach? What am I going to crack? Which is a password I'm going to crack? And then we have to capture things, capture things. We're going to capture things in a practical mode. I haven't got any video, so if it works, it works. If not, well, we're going to capture things to crack them. First of all, Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. How to hack, how to breach the Wi-Fi, you will know this. Free Wi-Fi. I have this card, it's a Wi-Fi, and I use it to capture the packets. I'm going to be very fast. The objective is not to teach you to breach security and to crack Wi-Fi's, but it's something else. But let's do it. Hands on. It goes. Good, good. Goes well. Can you see it better now? Good. Great. What we're going to do is the following. I have here this cell phone with an access point, access point, and I have this cell phone that's going to be connected to the access point. We have the password, so I'm going to, uh, then as we're here, we're going to capture, to capture. We have the BSS ID. It's a longer process of discovering, but we don't need this for this workshop. So once connected, as we're very close, in general, we've captured this handshake. You see here on top, it's a WPA handshake. We have captured the communication part where they were having a handshake. Talking about the key characteristics of the communication, we can deduct about the password of the Wi-Fi connection. If we have here, capture, and the name is capture, it's created lots of files. We'll delete the useless files. And then we have here uh, capture.cat, 
and then I'm going to give this to Hashgat. And there's the HC cap X. HC cap X. So we we'll have the capture one dot cap as format hash cat capture format. Very easy, simple, straightforward. You've done it every day. And here you see the way we progress. Next workshop, Windows. And this is nice because we use this quite often in whatever internal auditing. The company in general are using Windows as a user system and for servers. Companies have an active directory from Microsoft. So the capture of things to break for Windows is very important, very relevant. I have here this virtual machine, virtual machine Windows 10. Traditionally, the uh, part to extract logging information has always been, you know, this from Window Watch. It is not the way it worked before. Let's give it a try. First of all, I come here and Windows 10, they have an in integrated protection, antivirus integrated protection, and it could switch off uh, permanently. It's been uh, for a short time switched off, but we don't need to have this for the demonstration. So I can go to the file here, downloads, good, and I have Mimikat here. And we have to administer this as the administrator, very important as an administrator. To capture the information to break the Windows protection, we need to be the administrator of the device. We have to compromise the device. First of all, imagine that we've got the credentials we have here, uh, got the permit as an administrator. That could be in real life if we're able to compromise the device in such a way and the device has administrator it's a local administration having the same uh, password everywhere. I've seen this many times. If I do this, I can say, well, I have it here. And once again, I can go and can you see it? Yes. OK, good. Look at it. The screen. Look at the screen. Same password every time. We get a lot of information. If we go up, up there, where well, we have the information we want, we see there is a user who is the administrator, the domain is this device, and we have the hash NTLM that we're going to use afterwards. I'm going to explain what it is, but now we have the hash NTLM. In previous versions, Windows 7 and Windows, after Windows 7 with a registration key, the process used by many cats to get the local information, it keeps this and prior, if you have used it with all devices directly here, and there's no, there I got the password, uh, the user, user password. I didn't have to use NTLM. I got the password directly. That has changed with the modern systems. As I said, what is done here is that I got this process .exe where I get the login information. And um, many cats here. It's difficult to do it undetectably, uh, but uh, you can do it. But it's complicated to have to uh, switch off antivirus protection. It is not used for good things. It's difficult to uh, justify good use. So it is always considered as a flagged as a malware. But we can do it differently. You can come here and say, process, process here, I can say. Let's create a dump. What I do here is to get all the memory and I have a file, a dump. Then this file can be extracted onto another machine. I can work it with mini catch or whatever. And OK. It results that many antiviruses consider this as spooky because there is no legitimate use of mini catch no dump of the process. Antiviruses will delete it. They is created because it's task manager, but they drop it. So with a task manager, 
it depends. It's always uh, been discarded by the antivirus. If you see here, what I get is the administrator, the user. But I know there is something more. And how can I extract the other ones? The process we are attacking is the process that manages the logins and memories. The user is welcomed or not because credentials are stored. But if the user is logging for the first time, if after the last restart the user hasn't introduced his password, this hash wouldn't be there. So we have to extract this differently. If we open the CMD as an administrator, we can do this. We can extract the system and security files. Those are the ones having the information of the hashes. So they are at a point when the user tries to log in, they compare with what's been stored. As administrators, we can have everything, all the possibilities, CKLM, in some uh, file, same thing with the security here. And of course, it's absolutely the same. And same thing with the system. The name is correct here. What we have achieved here is to create three files, three files, the one we had previously, and now we have the three files. The three files, we can take them onto a machine where they'll be patched. And to go faster, we ex go directly here, and I'm going to tell which are those files. We have a tool that is part of the impacket, if you know this, you will be able to work with this. So get the secrets, get the secrets that are inside SAM system and security. And here, it's not only administrator hash, but I have other hashes. Administrator, guest, pay card, Louise and Martha with the hash sets. That could be used afterwards. They could be used differently. They could be used for cracking. It's what we're going to do afterwards. And also for paste, the hashes. Linux, we have uh, here, we have uh, done this in Windows, now Linux. Let's do it, it's very fast. I'm going to do it, this is my device, my real device. And Linux, then you have the information from the user, and you have two files here. We have logging uh, information in two files. I have here, and etc pass w. We have the information of the user, uh, the identifier, and so on. This x here means that the password is not inside the file. How peculiar! Historically, it was there. It was a password file, but not anymore. Now it's here. It's been stored here. And this is the etc shadow file. etc shadow, but we cannot read it. We need to be but root. Root is the only one having the uh, permit. It is what we have. We have to be the system administration. We have to have the root permit to extract it. So I have here uh, minus one etc shadow. Yes, now we have it. And we have rooted com user and I get all this information here. This flow of information is divided into three parts. In here we have this one and this other one. First one we have algorithm used and here is SHA crypt 512. The second one is assault, and we will see it at the end, at the very end. And the third one is hash. Hash is very more, it's complex. And the spoiler will be more difficult to break. Then, as we see here, we have the Wi-Fi, we have uh, hashes from Linux, from Windows. Let's start breaking things, and let's use Hashcat to break in. We have hashtag, Hashcat is a fantastic tool. It's a software part that optimizes in a very rude mode. Each version is faster than the previous one. It's easy to use, easy, easy, Hashcat. We're telling them what we're going to break, hash 
and TLM, Unix, or the Wi-Fi, or whatever. And I say, break this using this dictionary. And that's it. Examples. We're going to say this is NTLM hash that we have in hashes text. And then we're going to use a dictionary, and the file name is dictionary text, TXT. Very simple. You remember the mask attacks. We're going to replace the dictionary .txt by A3, that means hashcat. Instead of this, uh, you're going to trigger, we're not going to use a file. We're going to be based on masks. That's a mask. I'm going to explain what does it mean. A mask is defined as parts that are variable or steady. It's going to be iterated. If I say question mark L, then the mask will go through all the lowercase, lowercase. If I say now, it's a capital letter, and U is capital letter. Here we have trigger all the eight character passwords with the following structure. You start with capital letters. We have three lowercase and then four digits. Do you know about this structure? Yeah, it rings a bell, don't it? Uh, doesn't it? You have eight characters. We'll have this aspect, more or less. If you have to use capital letters at the beginning, in principle, if you have to have a number almost always at the very end. The structure is used, is widely used, for corporate accounts when you have eight character solutions, and it's very often seen this way. Or we can have the WPA, 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 and say, go as fast as possible. Minus O means use the kernel of OpenCL because hashcat, it's using OpenCL optimized. And then W3 means take all the resources you wish to take. I'm not going to use the system for any other thing. You can devour. You can take all the resources. You can consume all my resources. Let's crack. Firstly, we're going to break with dictionaries, and let's start now. So I'm not interested in that. This is my capture. So hashcat minus m2500. OK, hashcat minus m2500, capture minus zero one, and uh, the dictionary is Kawanashi. We presented this last year. So this is like I said before. Hashcat uses the f 2500 mode, WPA. We want to break this. This is what we captured with the antenna before. And to use, to do that, we are going to use this dictionary. So hashcat minus minus help. LRGWPA, these are the modes we are looking for. So the 2500 is there, and that's it, and we run it. This dictionary we are running is a very small dictionary, 25,000 password, actually 19,999, very small one, a number. But we haven't broken the password of our Wi-Fi. Hashcat said it's exhausted, meaning all the dictionary sources have been exhausted, and there's, it's not possible to generate more keys because we didn't give them the opportunity. So no breaking. So how can we move forward? Two ways we have. So on the one hand, a bigger or a di different dictionary. On the other way would be is to think how users build passwords. Users. If, if seen Mr. Robot or if they know how to hack or if the system require, requires a pre-requirement for passwords, they are going to use words and transform them, uh, mutation forms. Banana is the entry. We capitalize. So the first is a capital letter. We replace A with S with 4. And then we put some special characters, so B for N for N for and the admiration mark. So this is a transformation, a mutation, and an exit, plus the in the access. So some standard rules have been optimized. 
And uh, if you attended RootedCon last year, these are some of the uh, revisions of the mutation data that work well. So let's uh, mutate. We took the previous dictionary and we mutated. So we said here, like before, but now you're going to use the rules file minus r rules k major 2500. So when we have a file with uh, 50 mutation rules, for each word of the dictionary, we are going to apply 50 mutations. Meaning, if we have 10,000 word dic uh, dictionary and we have 50 mutations, we will end up with 50,000 because one is the multiplication of the other one. So at the moment in which we are careless and we want to cover more than expected, things are going to be out of control. So we have small dictionaries in this case. And if you look at CK Meiji 50, because it's only 50, 50 rules for a 20,000 dictionary, it can be assumed. But this is not ended instantaneously as before. So if we see the status, we can see how 3,000 passwords are being controlled per second. So 3,000 keys per second trying if we can go in. Uh, seeing if we can go in, that's what I meant, not trying. Seeing, so only seven minutes to go, oh, oh gosh. Um, so let me see, L I'll show you as I speak. At uh, one point in time, the hashcat progress is not the one we saw before. So we had 19,999, and now we have 19,999 per 50. This is the number, the end number. Oh, so that is critical. I don't know if you saw this, but here I have the use of uh, CPU. I don't know if you can see that. So this is a clue that shows you that the CPU is working 95%. Why is that? Because we are using resources as fast as possible. We are running things as fast as possible. We are cannibalizing the CPU. So we need to be patient with the, my equipment. Probably someone no, knew my access code, and the password is not the correct one. Probably that's the case. So we have this one, and this is going to work for sure. So that um, fast uh, trial, but th these things might happen. So at WPA, we need to capture the different parts of the communication network. If not, if if things are not controlled things like this, these can happen. So so it's going to take like a minute, but I'll continue talking anyways. So uh, let me remind you of something. WPA, we somehow break the protocol. We don't know exactly how, because the protocol is complex. Um, four steps, some of the pieces have a password for one step. So we are compared processes and processes based on passwords. Let's make things simpler. So hashes, the Linux or Windows. Hash are summary functions, so one-way functions, meaning I have, I have data, the byte succession, I apply a transformation, SHA1, and they gave, it gives us a summary, a fixed length summary. It is always the same length. I think this ended. Yes, the password is Leonidas123, the Wi-Fi password. So why couldn't we find it at the beginning? It's easy to explain. So we open dictionary, dicks, etc. Leonidas is here, but we don't get Leonidas one, two, three. We only have Leonid and Leonidas. We don't have Leonidas one, two, three. So by using the rule, this rule here, adding one, two, three, 
is so typical that we put it at the beginning of the file because they are ordered um, according to the probability of use of uh, users. So we took Leonidas that was in the dictionary and we added one, two, three. So hashes. So we can get a data succession and we calculate SH1 or the ash, whatever ash you want, and the summary is given. But if we multiply, we can divide things, right? Which is the inverse uh, um, operation. But there's no anti-hash. We cannot calculate that if we want to do the reverse process. So how do we do things? Well, we do something similar. If we want to calculate a hash, we say that calculating hashes is fast, depending on the type of hash. Some of them are fast, some of them are slow, and others are very quickly to be calculated. So we try, we start trying. So we get a dictionary and say, what if I calculate pepinillos? Is it the same thing I'm looking for? No, I iterate, I iterate, I repeat, repeat, repeat. Dictionary rules, I test, I try, and I calculate hashes. So luckily enough, at one point in time, the entry of SHA1 will give me a similar hash to the one I'm looking for. So I got a data succession and a chain, and if I calculate SH1, I can calculate the password. Let's uh, do that. I'll show you. We are going to talk about masks and hybrid attacks. OK. Let's exit the screen here. So NTLM, this is a NTLM hash. I captured it from a, an Active Directory or the user's equipment, from the user's equipment, etc. I want to break this because I might need the password of a user to do something for a database or to have access to anything. So I know they belong to an organization. I know the user of the organization in the end is going to use the structure that I mentioned uh, a while ago. So let's use this. Hashcat minus M1000, corporative, so uppercase, lowercase, 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 and four digits. Oh, it's not corporate, right? It's not corporate. So as you can see, things uh, pop in. So we are getting all these hashes, and we generate a chain. Uh, to calculate because we calculated the NTLM of the chain and we are trying to calculate something similar. So we broke the WPA and we are trying 5,000 passwords per second. Do you want to know how many are we checking per second? E E E E meaning means a lot of combinations. This is not 20,000, 26 uppercases per 26 lowercase per 26, lowercase, per 10, per 10, per 10, the digit. So the number, the figure is, is big. So if we're moving forward, we're going really quickly. So if you look at the status, you can see 4,000 or more. We're not doing that. We are doing, we are checking 70,000. So let's do something else. So hash, card, pot, file, and now I'll explain you this later on. So we do the same with the minus O option, optimize kernel, and the option W3, regardless of resources, ex make everything explode. We are going much faster than before. So the status is not 80,000 hashes per second. It's not 80,000 hashes per second. It's 80,000 kilo hashes per second. So it's not 4,000 as before, but 79 million per second. Now, with the optimized kernel, we are doing 100 millions per second. So it's very fast. So we captured 
four of the 14. We are going to do the same, but we are going to change this a D for an L for an L. So this is for data, etc. So we are going to do the typical thing, ending 12, 19, etc. So you remove four hashes in the part file. It means that Hashcat has seen these hashes, so, the, so it knows what they correspond to. So Hashcat says, I'm not going to calculate this because I know this already, but I'm going to calculate the, the, the rest. So as you can see, they pop in. So all the hashes here are real hashes of people using this password. Salami01, I don't know why. Salami01. So, 181 million per, millions per second, and see the progress. So before we had a 20,000 per 50 dictionary, this is what we are trying now. Millions and billions now. So 30 billion passwords. This is what we are checking. Our dictionary, the dictionary we are generating in a dynamic way with this mask, has 30 billion passwords. So we are moving really fast. We are moving fast because we are using NTLM hashes, which are really quickly to be calculated. If we did this with Munich, with the other kind of hashes, we wouldn't take one minute, but years. Those hashes are very slow to crack. As it ends, let's do something different. I said we can combine dictionaries, dictionaries with words and dictionaries with figures, with numbers. So there are two kinds of, uh, two dictionaries of this kind, which are good to crack corporate passwords, especially passwords where that have to be changed uh, every X time, uh, length of time. Some passwords, people tend to use the same password. If you have to change the password every three months, you say, what if my spring 2020 password is precisely that, spring 2020? Surprisingly enough, you might not be surprised though, you're going to see this. My dictionary with the word messes, months, all the months, and the first letter is a lowercase, oh, sorry, uppercase. So uh, autumn is two times because we use the N uh, word in Spanish. So, Sendonita69, this is a password I found there. Okay, this ended. So we took nine of the 14 we're trying to crack. So hashcat, etc. But instead of three, uh, we are going to use the mode minus A6. So modus A6 combines dictionaries, not with another dictionary, but as a mask. What we're doing now, actually. actually. So dicks, months, and the mask is the year. 29 and the digit. 29 and the digit. So 20. And the digits 20, so but we are in 2020. So instead of having one, some people might have put two. So we generate and we have them all. So iterating data, uh, dates is very typical. Uh, with 2000 something or two, and that's it. So in a company, all those of you who have a spring 2020 as a password, please change it because they are easy to crack. So quickly, even more quickly in the presentation, how do, how can I crack faster? I want more, I want more power. So, so cracking password is made up by many simple operations. So. This is simple to do. So we are doing at the CPU. CPUs are good for complicated operations, but only four in four, two in two, eight in eight, depending on the core you have. But 
there is a piece, a Harvard piece, which is good to do many things, small things in parallel, very quickly. Probably you know GPUs, graph charts that are optimized to for games, but they generate small polygons in a in a fast way. To see that big on the screen. So we can compare, in the case of NTLM, this equipment, E5, etc., is the CPU of a portable computer. So it's a regular uh, portable computer. So you can get up until 342 million hashes per second. I have a mid-high range card. I'm not multiplying 342 million, but 3 billion. Actually, we multiplied by more than 100. So if this would be normally 100 hours, now it's only one hour. So if it was months in the past, we are going to take on one day now with this. What if I don't have a graph chart? Uh, if, or if I don't want to pay for that, some companies are really willing to rent graph charts out. For example, Amazon. Amazon has uh, many graph charts that are um, rented out. So you can ask Amazon to rent a computer with 16 graph charts. Oh, graph cards, um, that's what I meant. So you get a beautiful, intuitive, very nice dashboard to communicate directly with uh, Amazon and crack many things, and very fastly. So you use the machine, you crack, and then you give the machine back. How much does it cost? Here you have one point billion So 1.2 billion or trillion hour actually trillion per sec hashes per second. 1.2 trillion hashes per second again. So this is with NTLM, which is a very quick hash. So if I can hash, um, sorry, if I can save that, because remember, <clears throat> Hashcat remembers the things that have been cracked. But what if I also remember the password I cracked before? If I remember all this, and every time I get a password, I take now, take down the hashes that this password can generate. Let's see if it works, because I'm not sure if Wi-Fi is OK in this room. So this is something I assembled a while ago. It was an, exp an experiment, actually. And as it turned out, this is very useful. If um, I have access to the internet, I can show you this to you. If not, I will not. Uh, and I did this just for fun. So I cannot have access to the internet. Um, I'm going to use my cell phone. So. Let's see if I can show you this to you later. But remember, so we are trying to save our hashes. So you can go directly to Hashcat instead of using the toys I was mentioned before. So this is what I have in my equipment. Uh, 
But the thing is, I I found most of the password somewhere else. So if we if we open this one, I can find a great number of hashes with the password associated to the hash. So next time, Hashcat is going to find this ha hash to uh, crack. The password is this one. So I'm not going to analyze it. I'm going to give this to you. So how can we do to avoid all this? Because this becomes a problem. If you remember hashes, your database is going to be huge to store everything there. So what we can do is to add salt to hashes. If we want to calculate the hash of pepinillos, the hash is going to be the, always the same, SHA1, and the hash is going to be always the same. But if I want to save a user's password, I save the user plus a random chain, a little piece here, and then I save the hash and the random chain in my file or database. So the system is going to use the um, password. We, it is going to add uh, the salt, this random series, and then they are going to, the machine is going to give you the hash, meaning every time a user is going to use pepinillos as a password, uh, if I added a different salt or piece of salt, these are real. Um, chains. These are real chains. I did this. These hashes are different each other, and uh, they are very different. So we don't have just a clue of part of a password, not even that. So hashes, when you change one per zero in a byte, the resulting hash is radically and completely different. <clears throat> Every time we give a presentation about cracking, I say the same. If I don't want to be cracked, two options are possible. Correct horse, battery staple. The length of the password is more important than how complicated it is. Obviously, it has to be long and complex or complicated, but the length is the most important thing in a password. Actually, you cannot see that because this um, comic is a little bit old, but the re general recommendation for a general user is to use a password manager, meaning to generate a password randomly. I don't want to know about it. I want to have 25 characters. I don't want to know about them, and I want them to be stored, be and I don't want to know about them. So unless something has changed, but nothing has changed. Uh, so it, this is a little frozen. I wanted to show you something, but it's not going to be possible. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. If you have questions now, feel free to ask. Questions? I have a question for you. Pablo, thank you very much for this excellent presentation. We've learned quite a lot. Thank you for what you've done last year. It's like, uh, uh, well, it did work perfectly well what you've done last year. It still works. And you've talked about fast hashes and slow hashes, and I'd like to ask you three things about it. What is it so that you have a fast hash or a slow hash? What about the characteristics? Because do you know if also when it is good to have a slow hash or a fast hash when it's convenient? And according to your viewpoints, which are the fastest and which are the slowest? Well, the difference is a way to calculate them. A hash is a mathematical operation taken uh, into input that's interpreted as a number or a block of numbers and it, it takes uh, mathematics, stirring it, and in the end, this could be more or less complicated. And you have uh, types of hashes trying to use lots of resources of a type, a lot of RAM, for instance, capacity. They need to store big structures. You need a lot of RAM that hinders the password cracking process. In the end, how fast, how slow is a way to calculate them? Related to your third question, do you want them fast or want them slow? 
There are two viewpoints. I want to have them fast because I want to break them. Regarding safety and security, you want to have them slow, slowest, our best. But regarding the server, if you have a hash that's very slow to calculate whenever there is a user trying to log in, it will be very slow to check the password. If you have very many users, you will uh, have a load on the server that will be high and you have to take... And the second question I have forgotten. Yes, according to your experience, which are the fastest and the slowest you know? Fastest are the MD4, MD5, and uh, well, it's the hash installed NTLM Windows because they're based on MD4 and some operations. MD4 with an encoding, and that's it. And the slower ones are decrypt, the new ones that are in the market now, and they make it difficult for you to break in. More questions? No questions? Congratulations, Jaime, for your wonderful presentation. Jaime is the other one. Jaime is the other one. I'm not Jaime. You have seen two names. I'm not uh, uh, Jaime. I'm Pablo. Jaime couldn't join us. I thought you were Jaime. No, I'm Pablo. I'm Paul. Thank you, Paul. Fantastic, Paul. Congratulations from you, for your presentation with a beautiful accent from Granada. What do you think about key pass, one password in a uh, particular level? And what about the company solutions? Uh, do we want those tools? Well, personally, personally, what is the, present, the current solution? Personally, I have deblocked it, but in general, I use it personally. I don't know my password. I know five, seven services that are critical services, but the other ones, it's keypad that's controlling this. I have 20, 25 characters, and that's it. In the case of companies, it depends. It depends. I have here stored in another database. I have uh, some corporate passwords for personal use. And one case of use could be shared passwords. It is necessary to share passwords within a team to have access to the system. There are specific solutions for that. We have password managers for having access to a device and then denying this and when. And there is another step forward, which is having what we call the PAM, uh, Privileged Account Managers, PAMs. Privileged Account Manager, when you need uh, extended privilege to access to the system, you are not going to access to the platform directly, you access to the Privileged PAM and then you have access at an intermediate machine on which you can have a control that is much better than a keypad that's somewhere else and who knows where. What were you about to show us that you couldn't? I wanted to show you two things, but I cannot get connected to the Wi-Fi. I cannot get connected to the internet. I want to show you firstly, bacon, bacon hash. Bacon hash is a toy I've mentioned before. It's sort of a database. It's a lookup table. MD5, 256, 512, where I have 50 billion passwords calculated of what I've seen from different things. And if you get an NTLM of a system, then prior to cracking whatever, I give it to Bacon Hash, because I might have it already. If I had already cracked it, why should I do it again if the system knows about it? On the other hand, and I think it's very good, I think it's great. If I could get connected to the internet, I would show you NM something. No, that's uh, another thing. Sorry, I can't get connected to the internet. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If I were able to get connected... No, 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 no. I cannot get connected. The second thing is that short while ago there was a leak. You've seen it. It is uh, HTC Mania. It's a big forum. And the other day, some colleagues talked about 
the type of hash. And what I presented this evening, instead of going to sleep, is a device taking the dump, putting this in a database, and establishing relationships, hashes, and users. And it's been cracked nowadays at my place. Physically, it was impossible to do it, so it's been cracked at home. To know how many accounts can be found, uh, could be found in a, a leak public. For instance, Telefonica accounts, Telefonica at Telefonica.com or at Telefonica.com.art Argentina. There are very many accounts. I found 20 accounts. It was simply to think loud, to think that there are users using the corporate, corporate account and in public services. If a user is using the same account for all things, same password, you might have a way in into the organization that we use when we're going to have a pen testing, external pen testing, to see if we could use it to break in. I'm sorry I couldn't show you, but believe me, believe me. Thank you. Great. No more questions? No future or not, you could use uh, dedicated hardware pieces, and those are uh, made to measure pieces of, uh, to control, for instance. What will happen to have an OpenCL which is uh, executed in the case of hashtag underlying? So, quantum computers for the future, but we don't know yet. Thank you very much. Thank you for a wonderful presentation, Pablo. And we're going to continue now. At uh, and within 30 minutes, 